This past offseason, graduate outfielder Anthony D'Onofrio announced that he would be leaving Mac baseball for the ACC. After spending the last two years as a Quinnipiac Bobcat, he'll be heading to Chapel Hill to become the next Tar Heel. D'Onofrio talked about the key distinctions for him in the transfer process. My whole decision came down to people. And I feel like a lot of the time kids coming out of high school are really trying to look for, you know, the, the coolest facilities and you know, the coolest spot to play. And that's not always the case. Like when, when I was in the NECBL this summer, that's where I played. Um, I put up some good numbers and once I entered the portal, I got some serious traction from some cool schools. And like to be at a kid who's never got that experience of like, wow, like all these SEC, ACC caliber programs are reaching out to me. Like just to have that really felt cool, but you know, how do you differentiate one from the next? D'Onofrio's path to UNC was anything but simple. Graduating from St. Anthony's High School, he committed to the Division III school SUNY Cortland where he played sparingly his freshman season. After he began to hit his stride in his sophomore season, COVID-19 shut everything down. D'Onofrio decided to move back home where he had aspirations of playing for Stony Brook, but was never given an opportunity to go on the field. With his back against the wall, D'Onofrio turned his attention to Quinnipiac University where he hoped to make the jump to Division I. He eventually became a walk-on, however, he didn't receive an instant yes as his father, Anthony D'Onofrio Sr., recalls. From what I understand, it had to be three or four emails, and two of the emails were a hard no. The third one was, I have my outfield, and I think the fourth one was, look, you're so persistent, <laughs> show up and let's see what happens. After his two years at Quinnipiac, he proved himself as a dangerous bat and talented outfielder. In his senior year, D'Onofrio was in the top five of many major hitting categories in the MAC, including his league-leading 31 stolen bases. His journey and experiences have jumped out to his new head coach at UNC, Scott Forbes. He's a homemade player, self-made player, and he should be happy about that. He should be proud of that. And he fit in immediately, because you're gonna gain the respect of your teammates if you keep your mouth shut and you play hard and you're talented and you're new, they're gonna be, but he's also old. And I've explained to him, you can be one of our leaders. Like you can be vocal. You need to, you need to lead this spring like you led at Quinnipiac because you're one of our best players. And it, take, it took him a little while to come out of his shell, but he's really blossomed. D'Onofrio is considering many programs like Mississippi State and Vanderbilt, but for him, the facilities and player development stood out at Carolina. There's just an incredible amount of talent. There's so much depth, so much talent at this program and to be able to play here, it's it's truly an honor. Like it, it's just awesome to go out there every day. The facilities, like I was saying, they're just unmatched. But something I really like is the player development and the way they handle their players. It's it's very similar to Quinnipiac, but different in their own ways. And I feel like at every program, you're going to get something like that. Although D'Onofrio will be spending the next year in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, many people were surprised to not see him selected in the MLB draft. While it's still a goal for him, D'Onofrio decided to take his grad year at UNC to improve his skills and stock over trying to sign a minimum deal to an MLB team. Coach Forbes believes playing in the MLB could still be in D'Onofrio's future. I mean, I think he's ready now. I think we're just lucky that he slipped through the cracks, to be honest with you. Um, but I do think his upside, I still think, yeah, he's played and he's older and he's, quote, a grad, but he's still baby-faced. He's still his best baseballs ahead of him. Um, we'll see some great baseball this year, but I think down the road he has a chance to be a major leaguer. And I don't say that very often. Um, you know, he's got those tools. And I want him to understand that I'm not just saying that too. Like, I believe it because he's got to believe it for it to happen. While D'Onofrio might be a nine-hour car ride away from his former team, he still maintains relationships with his former teammates at Quinnipiac. I actually uh, talk to Sean Swenson a lot. You know, I've been uh, talking to Keegan O'Connor, uh, Braden Seberg. And um, I feel like those guys right there, what if uh, I think they're going to develop a, um, a leadership role in the team. They allocate captains based off of who votes for them. So I, be, I believe all of those guys are definitely in the running. Also guys like DeRosa and Sebastian Mueller and Zimbardo. Like I feel like we have a lot of veteran leaders on this team who are going to be able to carry you know, the expectation into this upcoming year. One of the more special teammate relationships he had at Quinnipiac was with recently graduated Kyle Maves. Maves and D'Onofrio were roommates there last year at Quinnipiac and bonded in their spare time. So we did everything together, um, you know, driving to school, driving to practice, everything. Um, we also live with Dimitri George from the lacrosse team and Deb Nadeau, who used to play on the lacrosse team. Um, we had a phenomenal time, like whether we never cooked once, we would always just go get food. Um, but we had, we had a phenomenal time, like whether it was watching movies, we played NCAA football 14 at the beginning of the year, we played Red Dead Redemption, like 
we just come home from school gassed after the day of practice and um and just fire up the video games or whatever it may be peaky blinders we rewatch watch the star wars like we and we honestly look forward so much we'd call it getting horizontal we look forward so much to after games just going and getting horizontal laying on the couch and watching films which was awesome um we had a whiteboard in the room that we would track our steals and like our batting averages and stuff and like compare like each game which was fun and good good competition anthony d'onofrio is not the only d'onofrio who won't be returning for quinnipiac in the 2024 season his father anthony d'onofrio senior often took the long commute from long island and became a familiar face in the parents section that has always been a massive supporter of my baseball career so i know if he's going to be able to make the time to come down he will which i'm, I'm grateful for um i hope he brings the girls and the rest of the family so but he'll definitely make some pit stops over at, at Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Making the decision to leave Quinnipiac was tough for Anthony D'Onofrio, especially because of all the relationships he built. While D'Onofrio was now preparing to become the next great Tar Heel, the D'Onofrio family might still be a part of the Bobcat baseball community. You know, they really cared about each other. There's no question, you know, uh, you know, talk about it, Kyle Mays was his roommate and, uh, you know, Zimbardo and uh, Swenson and, you know, these guys he loves. You know, matter of fact, I'm I'm gonna come see them play, uh, regardless of if he's playing for them or not. You know, I'm gonna still come see them play because I I feel like I became part of the family as well. According to Forbes, D'Onofrio will open the season in right field and could slot anywhere in the lineup from leadoff to the fifth hole. UNC has never won the College World Series, and D'Onofrio could play a key role in trying to win their first. For Q30 Sports, I'm Ben Kavicious.